Hi, it's John Bauman. Here's a video about aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Aggregate means the sum total of everything. So instead of uh, a demand curve for an individual product, for example, the demand for strawberries, which is a downward sloping demand curve, as you know, when the price goes down, people will tend to buy more. This is aggregate demand, so this is total demand for all goods and services in a particular economy. Now, the aggregate demand curve is also downward sloping, so if we graph an aggregate demand curve, it looks something like this. We just call it AD, aggregate demand. Aggregate supply is the same idea. It's the supply curve for all goods and services produced. So we have here on the horizontal axis quantity of all products. And by the way, the, the vertical axis has the price level, so that's the average price level of all goods and services produced. The aggregate supply curve is also upward sloping, just like an individual supply curve. So if we have the AS curve here, and the equilibrium in the economy would then be at this quantity. You can think of that as GDP. So it would be at this particular GDP level. And the average price level would be at the intersection of those two curves. John Maynard Keynes used the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model to explain that an increase in total spending, for example, an increase in government spending would increase GDP. So if you look at the first graph here, we could see AD1 and AD2. So those are the aggregate demand curves, and there's a shift, an increase in aggregate demand here. Now the aggregate supply curve is not just an upward sloping curve in the Keynesian model. It's actually horizontal at first, and then at higher GDP levels or at higher quantity levels it becomes upward sloping and then it starts to become vertical. So at least this is true in the short run, just like the, the production possibilities curve, there's a limit to the amount you can produce within a short period of time. So this is the aggregate supply curve, according to Keynes. And Keynes said that if you look at the equilibrium at a very low aggregate demand level at a very low level of spending you can see that the GDP or the quantity is low and the price is also relatively low price level. Keynes said if you increase your demand at this point for example by increasing government spending or lowering taxes or increasing the money supply then you would have an increase in total quantity produced or an increase in GDP without causing any price increases. At higher levels of aggregate demand though, in this second graph here, if you graph the aggregate supply curve, you have it upward sloping here, but here it becomes vertical, so you have a GDP level that is at full employment at this point here, and this if you then increase aggregate supply, Keynes said it only causes inflation. As you can see, the price level is here. And then if you increase aggregate demand from 81 to 82, you don't really see an increase in quantity or aggregate. Uh, from If aggregate demand goes from 81 to 82, GDP doesn't really increase. But the price level goes from P1 to P2. So Keynes would not recommend an increase in government spending or a decrease in taxes or an increase in the money supply if the economy is at full employment. In the third graph, the aggregate demand and aggregate uh, the aggregate uh, demand curve is about in the middle of the aggregate supply curve. So it's in the upward sloping portion of the aggregate supply curve. So here Keynes says that if the government increases total aggregate demand from 81 to 82, so you can see that the equilibrium goes from here, an average GDP level, to the equilibrium of here, a little bit higher GDP, you would have an increase in GDP, so from here to here, but you would also have an increase in inflation from here to here. So he said there would be a trade-off between you have an increasing GDP on the one hand, but you also have higher prices. So one of them is good and one of them is bad. You could actually graph that in what's called the Phillips curve. 
So if you have a Phillips curve, the last graph here, according to the Keynesian model, at very high levels of inflation, you would have low levels of unemployment. So high levels of GDP. So this would be one point, and this would be another point on the curve and so forth. And if you draw a line through these points, you would have a Phillips curve that is, looks like that. So again, at high levels of inflation, you would have low levels of unemployment, which equates to the points, like the point here in the third graph would have a high level of inflation, but GDP is relatively high, so you'd have a low level of unemployment. This point on the Phillips curve here has a low level of inflation, but high level of unemployment. So that would be a point here where aggregate demand is uh, quite low and GDP is also low. So this is the Phillips curve. Classical economists did not think that the government should increase its spending or lower it, its taxes or increase the money supply and artificially stimulate the economy. They did admit that that would stimulate the economy in the short run but because of all the, the disadvantages that that would uh, create in the long run, inflation, and increasing national debt, and so forth, they uh, did not necessarily support that. So what they emphasized was instead of increasing the aggregate demand artificially, they felt that uh, we should emphasize an economy where supply is encouraged by, for example, increasing savings or for the government to encourage savings in the long run, for the government to encourage a positive business climate by keeping taxes relatively low, regulations reasonable and so forth. And what that would do then, it would actually increase the aggregate supply. So if we start with AS1 here in this graph and we go to AS2, we would see an equilibrium point. So here's AS2 we would see the equilibrium point increase to here, so we have a higher quantity or a higher GDP. So here's Q2. And we'd actually have a lower price level. This point is below P1. So the price level would shift to P2. And if we shift it even more a few years later, so this is more of a long-term look, we would have AS3 and so forth and GDP would keep increasing to higher levels and actually lower price levels and lower inflation so you would have the best of both worlds there you would also have no increases in government spending so you wouldn't have long-term problems like national debts